In this presentation, we will talk about the psychopathology of obsessive compulsive disorder. In the previous presentation, um, I had discussed with you guys obsessive compulsive disorder and its causes and its prevalence. So in this presentation, we will talk about the psychopathology. So um, let's just review what OCD is. So OCD is characterized by presence of either obsessions or compulsions, but uh, commonly uh, both obsessions and compulsions are present in OCD. So what are obsessions? Obsession is defined as an unwanted intrusive thought, image or urge that repeatedly enters the person's mind. So uh, the obsessions are distressing and they're ego dystonic. So in the previous presentation, I have already explained what is ego dystonic and what is ego syntonic. So I would highly recommend you guys to please go back and watch that presentation before uh, watching this one. And what are compulsions? Compulsions are repetitive behaviors or mental acts that the person feels driven to perform. So now that we have already um, revised what uh, obsessions and compulsions are, let's move forward with the presentation. So in this presentation, we will talk about um, signs and symptoms of OCD, OCD and schizophrenia, the differential diagnosis and the course and prognosis um, of OCD. Begin with the sign and symptoms of OCD. So according to ICD-10, um, obsessive compulsive disorder come under F42. The diagnostic criteria is as follows. So F42 is obsessive uh, compulsive disorder in ICD-10. Uh, the diagnosis may be specified by four character codes. So the broad diagnosis is obsessive compulsive disorder, and then there are certain character codes which can by which you can specify what kind of OCD it is. So F42.0, um, it predominantly there is obsessional thoughts and ruminations. So in this um, particular um, category that is F42.0, there is mostly obsessional thoughts and ruminations. So what are ruminations? So rumination is one of the core feature of OCD where a person um, spends a lot of time, you know, just worrying about analyzing and trying to understand or clarify a particular thought or theme. So uh, rumination in OCD is um, a little different from a typical intrusive thought. So an intrusive thought is a thought in itself, but rumination is a process. It is a cycle of repetitive thoughts, um, often with an emphasis on trying to work out why we are having that particular intrusion or we are trying to establish whether a particular event happened in the way that we think it did. Um, so uh, I'll give you a very um, small example on what rumination is. So for example, maybe you are driving back from work and maybe you your car bumps on something on the road. You hear the jolt and as you pull far away, there is an intrusive thought, oh my God, did I just run over someone? And this becomes so real for us that, you know, we might actually go back and look if there was someone injured on the road. So once we don't see anything, we might get back into the car and continue the journey. But as we begin driving, we begin to think about this memory of the event. So there can be many thoughts. The first one can be, oh, I did not see anyone laying on the floor, so there is no one injured. But then there can be another thought, oh, but it was really dark. What if I miss them? And the third thought can be, oh, there was a street light. I think it was bright enough um, to see if someone was hurt, but maybe it was someone who was wearing a dark cloth, so I couldn't really see them. So this pattern of um, cyclical thinking is what characterizes uh, rumination in OCD. 
So we just try to make sense of intrusion by thinking through past events to establish certainty about what actually happened. So in F42, it is predominantly obsessional thoughts and rumination. F42.1, it is predominantly compulsive acts. F42.2 is the mixed obsessional thoughts and acts. F42.8 is other obsessive compulsive disorder. And F42.9 is obsessive compulsive disorder unspecified. Uh, to be diagnosed with obsessive compulsive disorder, either the obsessions or compulsions or both uh, must be present for most of the days for a period of at least two weeks. So obsessions, thought, ideas or images and compulsive compulsions that are acts, they share the following features, all of which must be present according uh, to ICD-10 to get a diagnosis of OCD. So they are acknowledged as originating in the mind of the patient and are not imposed by outside person or influences. So if your mom tells you to wash your hand 10 million times a day, that would not be considered as a compulsive act. So it has to originate in your own mind. They are repetitive and unpleasant and at least one obsession or compulsion must be present that is acknowledged as excessive or unreasonable. So what is unreasonable? Unreasonable means uh, when because of performing that compulsive act or because of that obsession, your day-to-day -day life is disturbed. It is affecting your day-to-day -day life. So that's when it's called unreasonable. And the subject or the patient tries to resist them. But if very long-standing, resistance to some obsessions or compulsions may be minimal. The subject tries to resist them and at least one obsession or compulsion must be present which is unsuccessfully resisted. So to get a diagnosis of OCD, you must have the symptoms for at least two weeks for most of the days of two weeks. The symptoms should be originating from in your own mind. They are repetitive, unpleasant, excessive and unreasonable. And even though you're trying to resist them, but you're not able to successfully resist the obsession or the compulsion. So the carrying out of the obsessional thought or compulsive act is not in itself pleasurable. So this should, should be distinguished from the temporary relief of tension or anxiety. The obsessions or compulsions cause distress or interfere with the subjects social or individual functioning, usually by wasting of time. Most commonly used exclusion criteria, not due to other mental disorders such as schizophrenia and other related disorders or the mood or affective disorders. Now let's talk about OCD and schizophrenia. So about 25% of patients with chronic schizophrenia may also present with OCD symptom. Now, that can, this can range from 5 to 45%. 15% of the patients with schizophrenia may qualify for the diagnosis of OCD. So 25% may present with symptoms and 15% of them might actually get the diagnosis of OCD. So as in OCD, the OCD symptoms in these patients will not necessarily surface unless specific questions are asked. So as we talked earlier in OCD, the symptoms are very, very, um, they are, you know, they are present and we can see them. But when there is OCD along with schizophrenia, the symptoms will only surface or the patients will only talk about the symptoms only when they're asked about it. Otherwise, they will not even mention it. Many patients with schizophrenia can distinguish the ego dystonic obsessive compulsive symptoms perceived as coming from within from the egocentonic delusions perceived as um, introduced from outside. So this is the main uh, difference when it is just OCD and the second one when there is a OCD in a schizophrenic patient. 
So the follow-up studies demonstrate a diagnostic stability over the years, and it seems that uh, if OCD is present in a patient who has schizophrenia, the prognosis is usually um, very poor. Several studies among patients with schizophrenia and OCD reported an improvement in OCD symptomatology after the addition of a specific anti-obsessive medication. So the poor prognosis of patients with schizophrenia and OCD uh, preliminary data regarding the response to the unique combination of antipsychotic and anti-obsessive medication along with the high prevalence of this presentation has led several researchers to suggest that a schizo-obsessive category must would, could be of a very high value because the prevalence um, of these uh, patients, the prevalence of OCD in patients of schizophrenia is uh, increasing day by day. Now let's talk about uh, differential diagnosis. So personal distress and functional impairment which are required for the diagnosis differentiate OCD from ordinarily or mildly excessive worries, thoughts, and habits. So OCD will be called OCD um, only if there is personal distress and there is functional impairment. That means you're not able to leave your house because you're wasting so much time in washing your hands or cleaning or arranging things and mildly excessive worries thoughts and habits would not cause uh, would not be as severe as OCD the medical differential diagnosis include a uh, tick disorder tick disorder especially Tourette's syndrome or temporal temporal lobe epilepsy trauma and post encephalitic um, complications so psychiatric diagnosis that should be ruled out include um, schizophrenia, OCPD, phobias, and depressive disorders. Uh, so OC OCPD is obsessive compulsive personality disorder. It is very different uh, with OCD. OCD is a psychiatric disorder uh, and OCPD is a personality disorder. Here uh, there is excessive need for per perfection and trying to relentlessly control one's environment um, and interpersonal relationship. They are the people who have OCPD. They are preoccupied with the details, rules, list, and order. Um, and that can result in missing the major objective of an activity. Uh, there is excessive devotion to work. They are very rigid and they are inflexible. Um, and they are, uh, the, so these are personality traits. And these uh, personality disorder, the, pers the people adhere to orderliness and control over one's environment at the expense of flexibility and openness to new experiences. So OCD uh, can usually be differentiated from schizophrenia by the absence of other schizophrenic symptoms, uh, by the less bizarre nature of symptoms, and by the patient's insight into the disorder. So according to the DSM-10 uh, classification, um, considering insight in OCD is very, very important. Um, the insight can be uh, good insight, fair insight, or poor insight into the illness. Moreover, patients with OCD usually attempt to resist the obsession. They try to not fall into the obsessions. And they, the compulsive acts only happen when it's when they are unable to deal with the anxiety caused due to the obsession while in OCPD as we talked about earlier it is a personality disorder and um, they do not usually resist the obsession and it, because it's part of their personality um, and the degree of functional impairment is less in OCPD as compared to OCD. So like we talked earlier, follow-up studies demonstrate a diagnostic stability over the years, and it seems that the presence of OCD in schizophrenia predicts a poor prognosis. Several studies among patients with schizophrenia and OCD reported an improvement in OCD symptomatology after the addition of a specific anti-obsessive medication. 
Phobias are di distinguished by the absence of a relationship between the obsessive thoughts and compulsions. The fears uh, which are in OCD usually involve harm to others rather than harm to oneself. In addition, in OCD, when patients are phobic, they are usually afraid of unavoidable stimulus. For instance, it can be viruses, germs, or dirt, which are completely unavoidable in one's day-to-day -day life, as opposed to classic phobic objects like tunnels, bridges, and crowds, which one can avoid if they want to. So that is one of the major uh, difference between fears uh, which are present in OCD versus fear which is present in phobia. Major depressive disorder can sometimes be associated with obsessive ideas, but patients with OCD usually fail to meet all the criteria of the former. Other psychiatric diagnoses are closely related to OCD are hypochondriasis, body dysmorphic disorder, and trichotillomania. These patients have repetitive worries or behavior, but they are focal and dissimilar from multiple obsessions, compulsion that the patient with OCD would usually manifest. Course and prognosis. So many patients with OCD have a sudden onset of symptoms, and this can be usually after a stressful, stressful event such as pregnancy, a loss uh, or sexual problem. Owing to the secretive nature of the disorder, um, there is often a delay of five to 10 years uh, before patients come to psychiatric attention, although the delay may shorten due to increased public awareness uh, to the disorder through articles, books, and movies. The course is usually long but variable. Some patients experience a fluctuating course while others experience a chronic course. About 20 to 30 percent of the patients uh, show a significant improvement in their symptoms and 40 to 50 percent a moderate improvement. The remaining 20 to 40 percent become uh, chronic or their symptoms worsen. Patients with OCD are prone to depression and sometimes even to suicide. A poor prognosis is indicating by yielding rather than resisting to the compulsions. A childhood onset, bizarre compulsions, the need for hospitalization, a coexisting major depressive disorder, delusional beliefs, the presence of an overvalued idea, that is some acceptance of the obsession and compulsion, and the presence of a pers personality disorder, especially a schizotypal personality disorder. All these can lead to poor prognosis. A good prognosis is indicated by good social and occupational adjustment, the presence of a precipitating event, and the symptoms of, an, uh, uh, and the symptoms are of an episodic nature. The obsessional content does not seem to be related to the prognosis. So that was the psychopathology of OCD. If you want to read more, you can refer to Mary C. Townsend um, book, or you can read uh, Michael G. Golder, Juan J. Lopez, um, Ibar Jr., and Nancy Ederson's um, New Oxford textbook of psychiatry. Thank you.